Simon from SimonWood.com. Uh, there's an element of spring in the air today. The sun's been shining all day. And uh, for one of the first times of the year, we don't think we need the central heating on. And we've got the perfect wine to them, or have we? Five Italian whites, um, mostly from uh, the deep south, uh, but uh, not exclusively from the, from the deep south. How have I organised them? Well, they're all 2010 vintage, but they're all made from different grape varieties. So the logical way to do it is arrange them alphabetically by grape variety. Well, maybe not logical. Let's see whether I'm, uh, I've got them right. First one I've got is Coda di Volpe, Terradora from Campania. Give it a whirl. Now, once upon a time, a tasting like this of Italian whites would have uh, uh, yielded some rather pale and not very interesting wines. But um, I'm looking forward to these, and uh, this is a great start. Um, first of all, it's not a well. It's, they used to be like almost. Yeah, I couldn't tell them apart from water, but this has got a little bit of um, uh, of colour to it. Not that it's going on to the golden. I'm a bit too old. But what there is there, I stick my nose in there, and there's this wonderful uh, rounded. There's a fresh plush fruit. There's some peachiness, uh, but there's also some uh, floral floral edges there. It smells like it's going to be one of those rich but refreshing style. Interesting thing about all of these, apart from the last one, they're all 12.5%, 13% alcohol, so not trying to overwhelm me with power, but um, certainly quite a lovely, fresh, full smell. Let's see what it tastes like. Lovely. Um, in the way that Chablis uh, starts off rich, and you think it's going to be quite a rich, rounded wine, and then you've got this um, uh, really nice uh, zestiness that, uh, that uh, threads through it. It's the same here. So you've got the creamy nuttiness, you've got this uh, rounded, um, almond-scented, uh, bit of slightly honeysuckle-like um, peachy fruit, and then this purity and this freshness digs in and keeps your mouth fresh. What can makes you want to go back and have another sip? So I will. Delicious. Next one. Uh, we're on. Uh, so that was uh, Cote de Volpe, uh, grape that I've never seen in any other part of the world, and even in that part of the world, no one's heard of it. Um, Falangina, maybe slightly more famous, but not very much more. Uh, so this is Terry di Volcano, Falangina, and, um, and yeah, Falangina Bene Beneventano. Let's give this a whirl. So we're in Basilicata here. If you know your Italian geography, um, uh, you imagine Italy as a, um, a long boot. Um, Campania is the bottom of the shin, and Basilicata is the bit above it. So um, here, I stick my nose in, and it doesn't smell like it's going to be as rounded and as uh, peachy a wine as the one before, but it's got more pronounced herbal, um, yeah, almost pine-scented characters about it. it. Smells like it's going to be lighter, fresher, um, not as full in flavour, but maybe as interesting in flavour. Let's have a see. It has got touches of lime about it, and uh, funny thing is, it's, uh, the fillet flavour is actually a bit fatter and fuller than I was expecting. Uh, so it, it's got this piney freshness, but then uh, the the um, the actual flavours, rounded nuttiness. Uh, there's this, there is this touch of peaches, not as not as pronounced as there was in, in the in the first one. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's um, it's it's a good wine. I don't I don't quite like it as much as, as the one before. Uh, what for me is maybe missing that I get in the the best Falanginas, um is it, it seems like uh, I, I I don't really get much of a sense of place here. I get a bit of the grape variety, but uh, I like a bit more soil character coming through. Maybe it'll come out in time, but uh, if it does, I'll report back. Good, but. First one was better. Uh, third one is Villa dei Fiori Fiano. Fiano is the name of the grape variety, and this is from Puglia. So that is the heel of the uh, Italian boot. Give it a whirl. This smells quite light and delicate. It's got these nice floral characters going on there, and it has got some fruit. It's got a bit of pear. It's got a bit of light, uh, very ripe citrus. Um, if you've ever had chirimoya or custard apple, the touch of that there too. But um, feels like a um, fresh but Quite simple wine. Another of those that's quite rich and uh, full in the mouth, but then finishes crisp. Um, if I have a problem with it, it's just a little bit on that simple side. Um, perfectly decent. Um, more flavour, certainly, than the typical Pinot Grigio. Interesting thing is about, uh, you, you think of Southern Italy as being uh, a warm, a torrid place, but uh, there is a freshness, and, uh, and yes, you do get these weighty flavours, but there's still a freshness about um, all these three so far. Let's see whether we get them in uh, wine number four, Grecanico, uh, which is uh, the great variety, Terry di Giumara, which is in Sicily. Let's give this a whirl. So I think the idea of, uh, I think Grecanico was one of a number of grapes that uh, traditionally has been used for Marsala, but uh, how often do you drink Marsala? I can't remember the last time I drank some. It's in the last five years, but it's not in the last year. Anyway, let's see what this is like. We're back here with that slightly piney character, 
pine, the resin, a bit of the a bit of waxiness here. Uh, there is fruit there, light citrus, but it's um, it, it's more underplayed. And um, actually, what's been good about the wine so far? Uh, what, what people call good mouth feel. There's some wines that you put in and you want to uh, swallow or spit out as soon as possible. Uh, all of these have had like a rounded richness, but freshness. This feels like it's going to be another of those. Maybe not um, uh, not big on fruit, but certainly we'll have, we'll have the fragrance and a bit of texture too. Almost an edge of something like lily in there. That uh, ever so slight peppery. Uh, when lilies go, that's slightly bit too. Uh, uh, what, what's it called when flowers over mature? Not overripe. But anyway, you know when flowers start to droop a little, and their their fragrance comes through a little uh, quite strongly. A little bit of that character there. But there's this more of uh, this almond peach nuttiness uh, that is is carrying it through. As I was expecting, nice texture, good wine. I think the first one's still the star. Let's see, well, let's head a bit further north, and we're in the Marque here, um, so halfway up the other side, basically, and um, for Palio di San Floriano, Verdicchio dei Castelli di Gesi Classico Superiore. Whew. Terre Monte Schiavo. Is that enough words for you? Um, anyway, Verdicchio is the grape here, and Verdicchio is uh, one of the, it, it's uh, long been thought one of the more, more, most interesting white grape varieties um, in, in Italy. Uh, problem is that uh, Italy's got, I don't know how many, it's got probably a couple of thousand different grape varieties. Sometimes they just grow in one vineyard and there's like uh, only about 80 vines of it. Um, Verdicchio is probably more widely planted and, and better known, and from a region that's actually closer to the north of Italy, some of these southern grapes, uh, they, they've almost like it stayed down there. The, the southern Italians haven't wanted to shout about them so much, whereas Verdicchio has probably had a wider audience. Uh, but that's not to say it doesn't make terrific wines. Let's see if this is one of them. Now, as I was saying, this is the highest in alcohol, 14%, where the others have been 12 and a half mostly, and only one at 13. Um, but I stick my nose in here, and it smells cooler, it smells fresher. Um, the, it, there's, um, the, it, the, there's, there is the fruit lingering in the background, but it's, uh, here I get almost more of a sense of soil, which I haven't really got in, in uh, the others, maybe in the first two, the Coda de Volpe and, uh, and the Falangina. But this is more, more of a sense of earthy place. It's like a, uh, a clay-like minerality coming through. It smells like it's going to be good. Um, but my experience with Verdicchio is that sometimes they, they taste good at this stage and then you try them a year or two later and they're even better and you try them three or four years later and they're better still. But uh, let's see what it's like today. It's got weight, it's got presence, uh, it's got the fruit flitting in, it's got... Um, um, I would say the pear, maybe even something about it, like ripe red berries and strawberries in there. Um, if, if the citrus, it's on that very, very ripe um, orange scale. Uh, and then this, um, uh, there's, all, there, there's a sense of a, uh, an outdoor place, a, a herbal character coming through. Maybe a little bit of the hints of pine again. And, um, but then this creamy nuttiness underpinning it all. You do notice a little bit of weight and presence, but to be honest, I've noticed that in, uh, in most of the ones uh, here today. Um, but um, there's just something about the finish here that makes, me th makes you think you're not seeing it in its full glory today. It's looking really good now, uh, but I've, I have a strong suspicion that a um, couple of years' time it'll be even better. Uh, but a tidy set of five wines, uh, favourite were the first and last. Uh, I didn't plan it that way. That's just alphabetical accident. But um, I enjoyed them. See you soon.